Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hisham Beh, uh, and uh, now we're going to start the practical part of our course. And we will start off from the end of the previous lecture, which was the finding the angles. I hope you guys post the video, go check it, and then come back because we'll start measurements right away. So off we go. I would like you to prepare a piece of paper, a pen beside you, because we're going to take the measurements and afterwards we're going to choose the platform that we're going to have to implant in this patient. This is an actual CT from an actual patient. I have hidden all the uh, personal information for the patient for the confidentiality. And um, I hope uh, you go step by step with me. So uh, without further ado, let's start. So the beginning is that, as you can see over here, this is the NPR that we are um, uh, stopped at for the previous video. And on the uh, lower left part, this is the cross-sectional area of the annulus that we have found. So in order to make sure that we are at, for, for, at the virtual annulus, uh, we have to do two things. One, you have to scroll up and down and see that the three cusps appear and disappear at the same time. So as you can see here, they appear and disappear at the same time. And the other thing is that, as you can see over here on the left lower part, you have to do a complete circle starting from the, uh, I'll start here uh, from the left coronary cusp and see that it is here touching the lower part of the uh, nadir of the left coronary cusps. So I turn my, uh, the, I turn the yellow line, uh, the, the blue line, I turn the blue line at the lower part of the cross section and my eyes is on the yellow frame over on the right side. So when I turn, I have to do a complete turn and each time I pass by a cusp like the right coronary now, I have to see it touching this line. And this means that without moving, scrolling or anything from the same level, this is at the same level at the left one. And then I, so the left and the right at the same level and now this is the uh, going through the non coronary cusp and you can see it is touching the left coronary cusp, just right here. So this means that the three cusps are aligned. So after I finish this, I enlarge this by double clicking on the image, make sure again, and just stop where all the cusps disappear. And on the upper segment uh, of the image, then you can see the tools over here. So you start to choose the closed polygon, as we have discussed before, and then start to delineate the annulus. And then the last point, you double click, and then it will appear over here, the measurements. So now we're going to write down these measurements as I'm going to show you. So here, as, we can, uh, as you can see, we have the diameters. So we have a diameter of, a minimum diameter of 21 and a maximum diameter of 26.8 which is a 27 and we have an area of 4.45 centimeters square and we have a perimeter of a 7.63 so here are the measurements so what we're going to do is that we're going to get the mean diameter of the annulus, which is a calculated mean, which is going to be I'm going to get the calculator up, and it's a 21 plus 26.8 divided by 2, and this will get your mean, which is a mean of 23. I mean of 23.9, which is 24. So when you reach this level, then we have the significant information in order to know which valve that we're going to use. So we start off with a self-expanding uh, evolute, and then we have this sizing chart for the evolute I'm going to show you. And here in the sizing chart, you get to see that your, uh, your 29 valve lies in a diameters from the 23 to 26 and a perimeter of 72.3 to 
So those two diameters are the ones that we need in order to choose which valves are we talking about. So we're basically choosing the 29. So as of from here, now we know that the 29 is the valve that is suitable for this annulus. However, we need two more things in order to make sure that this is a safe valve to be implanted, which are the sinus of valsalva diameter, which is the mean diameter, and also the sinus of valsalva height. And those two we're going to get right now. So we go back to the NPR by getting a double click on the image. So in order to get these two things, the sinus of valsalva diameter and the sinus of valsalva height, we go back into the NPR by pressing double click on the image. And then as you can see here, without movement of this annulus on the left side, you can measure the sinus of valsalva height, the coronary height, and this is getting the length. You get the length from up there. And then you get on the floor of the left coronary, and then you go down until you reach the baseline. And I want to focus on something important here. You do not need to go to where you can see the cusps as attached because this is not the true annulus. So the true virtual annulus is at the line that is cutting over here. So that's why we measure from the floor to the line. We do not measure from the floor to the attachment. As you all know, this cusp is a semi-lunar valve. So it's actually the lowest at the nadir. But maybe the coronary ostium is not perpendicular, is not actually aligned with the nadir. Maybe it's displaced a little bit. So that's why you should not measure from the floor to the correct from the floor to the nadir that you can see under that coronary. No, you have to measure from the floor to the line that we fixed, which is the line at the virtual angles. So here we're going to write that. The left coronary height is 20, and we measured the left coronary sinus, which is from the STJ down to the same line, which is 26, and we turn the yellow line and fixing our vision on the yellow image up in order to see the right coronary cusp. In this particular patient, the coronary, right coronary is arising from the left coronary cusp, but we're going to practice as if this coronary artery is arising from the right coronary sinus. So what we're going to do is that to see where is the floor of the right coronary artery and then go down to the line, which is the line marking the virtual annulus, and also make the STG junction. And we're going to record it as so. So we have a right coronary height of 11.8 and a sinus height of 17.3. Now we go into the diameters. So in order to get the diameter of the sinuses, we enlarge the short axis. This is the annulus as we have the, uh, agreed before. And then we go up until we see the leaflets. And I can see here, this is the left coronary and the circumflex joining the left coronary cusp and over here is the maximum diameter. So we get a length from the middle of the leaflet to the commissure and same here and same here. So the yellow line represents the non-coronary cusps. The green line represents the left coronary sinus. And the red line represents the right coronary cusps. So we write those down as well. So it's um, the left is 33.6. The right is 32. And the none is 33 as well. So now we can get the average uh, sinus diameter for the three and then we make sure and then we make sure that the sizing is adequate 
for the 29er evolute. And as you can see here, a sinus oval zebra diameter has to be an average of more than 29, and the sinus oval zebra height had to be an average of 15. So by getting all these measurements, now we know that the 29 evolute is the correct value and the safe one. So, so this is the important part of the video. Now we're going to stop here. And here is how to choose the valve and how to make sure that this valve is safe. And the next part of the video will see more consideration in our CT in order to be familiar with the procedure itself. So this is what you get from the radiology report. However, what I want you to focus on in the next video is what to take care of into the intervention from the CT and this will make a, a very good benefit for you. Thank you for um, uh, following the video and see you in the next videos. Thank you so much.